Justice and Correctional Services Minister Ronald Lamula is set to outline the details of former President Jacob Zuma's incarceration. Zuma handed himself over to Correctional Services less than an hour before the expiration of the deadline for police to arrest him. In a statement, Lamola's office says the minister will outline the correctional services processes rather as they relate to the execution of the constitutional court order. The former president was sentenced to 15 months in prison for contempt of court. Let's now go to our political senior reporter, Samkele Maseko, who is standing by for us in escort. Very good afternoon to you, Samkele. What are you seeing? At this point in time, Nzinga, the Minister of Correctional Services and Justice, Ronald Lamula, has arrived here at the Escort Correctional Services facility. As you can see by the visuals we're showing you, as you go in, you can see the two uh, convoys of the minister that are inside. The minister is inside currently receiving a briefing from the various uh, heads of this correctional services facility and getting a briefing as well from the national commissioner of correctional services arthur fraser and also the provincial commissioner is here inside with the minister of justice ronald damula as he receives that briefing on the processing of former president jacob zuma who was initially in the first stage of the processing as he was processed his pictures were taken his thumbs were rolled yesterday evening he was entered into the system they will now be doing medical checkups on the former president and also doing a security a security assessment around him for this correctional services facility in order to determine where he will be going from now onwards there is an assessment that was done by some saying that he will be spending the rest of his 15 months incarceration at this specific facility but that is yet to, to be determined with the assessments that are currently being done he is in isolation due to COVID-19 protocols at this point in time and due to the life-threatening uh, health illnesses and conditions that the former president may have. Samkele, we know that there was quite a lot of angst among former President Zuma's supporters in the run-up to his incarceration, people saying they were going to try and defend him, some even saying they would lay down their lives for him. Are you seeing any of those supporters in the vicinity or any protests that have come up uh, after his incarceration? Those supporters of the former president will be making their way here. They are making their way. Our colleague Jade Lee Pulsa uh, is uh, going to be following that specific story of uh, them leaving the Eteguini region and coming to show their support and solidarity to former president Jacob Zuma. We did see earlier on Carl Niehaus, who's a suspended member of the African National Congress, temporarily said that they are coming to salute former president Jacob Zuma as his comrades here in court. So Jade Lee Pulsa will be following that story. Mm -hmm. But... Even yesterday evening, the numbers had dwindled dramatically at the home of the former president when uh, he was essentially coming to be arrested by the South African police service. As you know, that the former president missed his deadline on Sunday to hand himself over. And as of Monday, it was on injury time and it was specifically the time for the minister of police, Peggy Taylor, to effect an arrest against the former president. So this issue that the former president has handed himself in uh, is... Uh, a debatable, if one may say, because some others will say that uh, the timeline had lapsed for him to hand himself over and that by the time uh, he went to the police station, that was effectively an effortless arrest by the South African police service where no bloodshed was lost. But credit must also be given to the former president because he left his compound not under duress not forced by anyone, but it was a decision that he had taken, and particularly at a time at about quarter past 11 yesterday, where he had briefed his comrades that he has taken a decision to go and hand himself in. He had briefed his family, as you'd seen earlier, with the tweet from the daughter of the former president saying that she had spoken to him and that he's uh, uh, pretty much in high spirits. Uh, also, the individuals that we spoke to, particularly when the former president arrived here, they said that he did not give them any hassles and that uh, he, uh, when the others uh, who were traveling with him in his blue light convoy, when it arrived here at about half past one this morning, when he was being processed, when his pictures were being taken, those family members and those ANC supporters who were accompanying him were rebellious and saying that that must not be done to the former president and were told that he seemingly said, no, uh, the people of the correctional services are 
doing their jobs. This is history in the making. It's for the first time in the dawn of democracy in South Africa in a democratic dispensation that a former head of state in a democratic country is being incarcerated. So they must do their jobs and people will then know that uh, this correctional services facility, a former head of state, was arrested and he was stationed at this particular correctional services facility.